Welcome to the Winter 2021 Commencement Ceremony for the University of Maryland School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. My name is Dawn Jordan, and I am pleased to officiate my first graduation here at the University of Maryland as Dean of the School of the Built Environment. Today, we honor the graduates of the School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation for the journey that they've taken with us over the past few years. It gives me great pleasure to introduce you to the scholars who have guided our graduates from their first day at Maryland to this event today. The faculty have counseled, challenged, questioned, encouraged, and cheered you forward through your academic journey with both thoughtfulness and care. Students, please know that this unforgettable group of individuals will always be a part of your life. We are only a phone call, an email, or a Zoom away. Now I want to recognize an extremely important group, our excellent staff. This compassionate team has supported all of us with grace through the challenges brought by the pandemic. I am eternally grateful for their energy and creativity, especially in shifting to this virtual event on a few days time. Without them, this wouldn't be possible. Students, I know there are others that have supported you along the way. Families, friends, high school and community college teachers, classmates, some of them may be with us today. Please hold them in your heart, today and always. Now I wanna celebrate you. Your journey hasn't been an easy one. Earning undergraduate and graduate degrees in built environment professions is challenging. Let's not forget that you've completed your journey during a public health crisis. You have demonstrated that you are adaptable and committed to achieving your goals. For some of you, a portion of the coursework needed to complete your degrees was offered virtually. This may not have been what you expected, but you stuck with us, proving that the desire to learn could not be diminished by COVID-19. I know many of you are wishing for normalcy, but I'd like to challenge you to think beyond what is normal. This pandemic has changed you. It has changed all of us. I encourage you to embrace this and take what you've learned about yourselves and others as we coexist in the built environment. With this knowledge, you will design, plan, restore, and develop buildings, neighborhoods, and cities that are more resilient to the powerful forces of nature. You will change the world because you were challenged to do so by the nature of your education and these unprecedented circumstances. You can do anything. We knew it from the first moment you walked into our classrooms. As is the tradition at these ceremonies, we have a keynote speaker this afternoon, and I'm pleased to introduce you to Ms. Julie Smith. Julie is the Chief Administrative Officer at Bazuto, a company founded in 1988 on a vision to provide sanctuary and whose drive to do the right thing while delivering authentic experiences is at the heart of what they do. Julie is responsible for the oversight of and strategy of Bazuto's marketing, human resources, technology, and research departments. Previously, she served as president of the Bazuto Management Company, overseeing nine, a $9 billion portfolio that included more than 50,000 units in more than 200 apartment communities throughout the Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, Midwest, and Southern regions. Under Julie's leadership, Bazuto Management grew from an organization with 15 employees to one with more than 2,000. In 2016, Julie was honored as a distinguished leader by the Commercial Real Estate Women Network. In 2015, Julie was named one of Washington's Women of Influence by the Washington Business Journal as well as one of the top 10 most influential women in multifamily by Multifamily Executive Magazine. Julie serves on the board of Victory Housing and is an advisory board member for the Masters in Real Estate Development Program at the University of Maryland. A great friend to the University of Maryland and the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation, please join me in welcoming Julie Smith. Thank you so much and good evening. 
It is my honor to be here with you commemorating this milestone achievement for the graduates in the School of the Built Environment. To Dean Don Jordan, to Professor Madeline Simon, Professor Brian Kelly, Dr. Claire Erasabal, Professor Hirosiki, Professor Maria Day Marshall, Dr. Jeremy Wells, I thank you and commend you on your work with this graduating class. And before I go any further, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of the students on this accomplishment. Like you, I was so looking forward to participating in this ceremony in person, on campus with you and your families. But once again, we're called to pivot in response to this persistent and very stubborn virus. My enthusiasm for this moment and the enormous privilege of delivering this commencement's address is no less dimmed by the silver screen of the Zoom setting. I am delighted to be with you. And I've been thinking about what I might share with you for weeks now. The dichotomy of this point in time is more pronounced than I can ever remember in my personal or my professional life. And this is what's been swirling around in my head. And I quote a few opening lines that may sound familiar to you. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was a season of light. It was a season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us, and it goes on. The year was 1775. The place was England and France, and the war was the French Revolution. The book was a tale of two cities. And of course, we all know the author, Charles Dickens, who described this iconic book, one that most of us were required to read in middle school, as an experiment where rather than relying upon dialogue to develop characters, Dickens instead relied upon the plot. It was first published in 1859. Dickens begins this tale with a vision that human prosperity cannot be matched with human despair. He, in fact, tells about a class war between the rich and the poor. He also tells of a time of misery and suffering on one hand and joy and hope on the other. Radical opposites taking place at the same time. Chaos, conflicts, and anguish, as well as happiness. Sound familiar? Certainly does to me. We've been living a tale of two cities for some time now with a divided government, social unrest and racial injustice. And the last two years have magnified this dichotomy and exposed the fragility of our business infrastructure, our schools, our healthcare, our childcare support systems on which we have all come to depend. Making us look outside ourselves and forcing us to consider the impact of influences beyond our control and what may be in our control if we're willing to take a deeper look. The past two years have presented untold challenges. They certainly have been some of the worst of times in our lives. But because this is a celebration, I'm going to focus on the best of times in this moment. As graduates today, there is a strong case to be made that you are really in the best of times. And I could say you are in the catbird seat. The amount of innovation that we have witnessed in the past two years has been extraordinary. And the economy has been on a roll. And most importantly for you, this is hands down the best employment market that I have ever seen in my 35 years in the real estate industry. Not only are there countless opportunities in just about every facet of the business, but the rules of the workplace are being redefined in front of our very eyes, allowing for more autonomy and flexibility than ever before. And good talent is in short supply, motivating companies to reconsider their value proposition and how to attract people like you to join their team. Now, some of you already have jobs that you love, and this new degree may lead to new and exciting prospects for you wherever you, where you already are. And others may be at an inflection point and will use this moment to reimagine what comes next. So it's an appropriate time to ask yourself, in the words of Mary Oliver, tell me, what is it that you plan to do with your one wild and precious life? I would suggest that you contemplate further on not just the what, 
but the who and the why and how you might take this time in your life to make a positive impact on the world and what kind of leader you wish to be and how you will inspire and build trust and engage the stakeholders all around you, how you will give back to your industry, your community, your alma mater, how you will continue to build upon your network so that you are just a phone call away from a new perspective, a new idea, a new opportunity, how you will do your share in preparing the next generation of leaders in our industry. And as you do this, you might look to others for inspiration, both leaders and organizations that are doing work that speaks out to you, where you believe you could also make a difference. Some of the companies that I admire and who are innovators in their space, considered cutting edge, are leading with something called conscious capitalism. Companies like the Container Store, Patagonia, Warby Parker, Ben & Jerry's, Google, and there are many, many more, highly successful and profitable, some even thought of as love brands. John Mackey, co-founder and former co-CEO of Whole Foods Market, co-authored a book on conscious capitalism and founded the nonprofit by the same name. And they define conscious capitalism as a way of thinking about capitalism in business that better reflects where we are in the human journey, the state of our world today, and the innate potential of business to make a positive impact on the world. Promoting an ongoing integrated approach to social responsibility, self-awareness, and purposeful decision-making. These are companies with a higher purpose who focus on the why. They concentrate on optimize, optimizing equal value for all stakeholders, leading with a we rather than a me mentality, championing the company's purpose and inspiring actions that contribute to a conscious culture, and finally building a culture of trust among employees and all other stakeholders. It's an ethos, it's a way of life and a compelling concept that has proven out in countless organization. It's something that we practice daily at Bazudo, and one of the main reasons I'm still there after 32 years. I taught my first class at the University of Maryland in the master's in real estate program back in the winter of 2008. It started with a phone call from Margaret McFarland asking me to be a guest lecturer for one class only. Before I knew it, Margaret had convinced me to teach a semester course as an adjunct. I had no experience teaching, was extremely busy running a company and raising two young daughters, but was intrigued and intimidated by the challenge. And I thought it might be fun. I remember my first class so well. The students were willing participants in my test kitchen as I figured out what worked and didn't work. And I was grateful to them for their grace. I remember that my first midterm exam was so hard, I had to completely scrap it and start all over. A very humbling experience. And that was 14 years ago. And I still hear from the students in this first class and many other classes that followed. I attended a design, a design meeting last week and to my surprise, one of those founding students who is now running a development operation was at the meeting. As we caught up, he shared that his oldest of three kids is now 16. His son was just a toddler when I met his dad back in 2008. I was really proud to see how he had excelled and how he was pursuing his passion. One of the things I love about this business are the long lasting relationships that we collect along the way and the fact that we stay connected. By getting involved in organizations that support the real estate industry, such as ULI, DCBIA, NAOP, CRU, your alumni groups and others, you will continue to build your network, to grow as a professional and to have the opportunity to lead outside of your company and to give back to the communities that we are serving. And you might just try your hand at teaching at least once. Yes, these outside activities are a time commitment and it can be tough to juggle when there are multiple balls up in the air. But when faced with the challenge of how to manage a business in the midst of a global pandemic, it was these organizations and these trusted relationships where I turned for guidance on how to navigate these uncharted waters and for basic moral support. Get involved and stay involved. You won't regret it. 
this is an incredibly exciting time in your life. As 2021 comes to an end, I hope that you are proud of the hard work that led to this moment and that you count this achievement as a, if not the milestone of your year. I close with these words by Minor Myers Jr. Go into the world and do well, but more importantly, go into the world and do good. I wish you and your families the happiest of holidays and thank you. Julie, thank you so much. Um, I know that you've inspired us all to remember why we do what we do and we're committed to doing good as well. So thank you. We now get to hear from our student speakers that represent each of the school degree programs. Our first speaker is Frank Zoe. Frank is a recipient of the PhD in Urban and Regional Planning and Design. Frank, please share your thoughts with us. Thank you. Um, first of all, I feel honored to be selected as one of the commencement speakers. My PhD life is shaped by two worlds. One world is constantly changing, full of uncertainty and unease. From the rise of populism following the 2016 election cycle to the unprecedented global pandemic, this world undeniably reshaped my perspectives on what we care for in life and what we strive for every day. The other world is equally challenging, filled with two voices fighting against each other. One asks, is this work going to make real difference? One whispers, can't you just do this work for the utilitarian sake? Someone wise once told me, we are the product of our time. My two worlds intertwined with each other as I progressed in this PhD program. Now I believe we are both the product of our time and our own actions. During this journey, I feel lucky and deeply indebted to have encountered the many helpful, thoughtful, and joyful faces in our school, in the university, and in my community. I want to pay special thanks to my primary advisor, Garrett, the former program director, Casey, the current director, Hero, and our former dean, Don Lamboff. They showed their trust and support when I needed the most. I used to think that earning a PhD degree means I know more than many others, but the more I know, the more I find I don't know about this world. So if there is one philosophy behind this doctor of philosophy, I guess, take actions. Life is short, take actions. There is always going to be a road not taken, take actions. Be kind, be bold, and take actions. The actions we take create our path. And trust me, when we look back one day, the past will make sense. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zhou. Our next speaker is Samantha Jane Lee, who is a candidate for the Joint Masters of Applied Anthropology and Master of Historic Preservation. Welcome, Samantha. Hi, everyone. My name is Samantha Lee, and I'm a PhD candidate in the Department of Anthropology, as well as a dual degree Masters of Historic Preservation and Applied Anthropology student. First, I wanna give a huge congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. What we have accomplished in the past few years is incredible and deserves to be celebrated. Coming together again this semester after such a long time apart was a real gift and has demonstrated to me how important it is for us to support to support and encourage each other, both academically, but also in our endeavors outside of school. We are receiving our degrees in the midst of a global pandemic and continue to battle with issues like race, racism and injustice, as well as an increase in catastrophes caused by climate change. We know that these issues are not separate from the built environment, but rather are entrenched within it. Our training in architecture, planning and preservation has equipped us with the tools and knowledge to combat these challenges but it is ultimately up to us to go out and create the changes necessary for a better future. I know that everyone graduating today will change their respective fields for the better. My classmates in the preservation program are some of the best people I know. They are kind and intelligent people who are passionate about creating better buildings, better cities, and better environments. And I'm confident that they are up to the task of improving the built environment in ways that further social justice and equity rather than impeding it. Finally, I would like to thank all of the MAP faculty and staff who have helped us to get here today. Their instruction, guidance, and counseling have allowed us to learn and grow. 
In particular, an immense thank you to Laura Stieg, whose generosity and thoughtfulness I am sure we have all benefited from at some time or another. Once again, a massive congratulations to the class of 2021. I'm so excited to see what you all will accomplish next. Thank you, Samantha. And I was just thinking the same. We're looking forward to seeing what you accomplish next as well. Our next speaker is Gazina Pryor Azevedo, candidate for the Masters of Architecture degree. Gazina, please share your thoughts. Congratulations, everyone. Um, I'm so thrilled to be at this point, um, despite it being under circumstances that none of us thought it would be. Uh, I want to start by saying a thank you to all the partners, family members, and friends who extended us grace and picked up slack as we dedicated our time and energy and to our hours and hours of studio work. I can confidently say that most of us could not have arrived at today intact without you. Um, as people who generally appreciate the importance of place, I can also say that most of us architecture students did not start out on this path in architecture two, three, four, or more years ago thinking it would be culminating the way it is together in virtual space rather than physical space, um, having gotten peaks inside each other's living rooms, yet in many cases having no idea how tall many of our colleagues are. Um, and in thinking about what the most important takeaway is after these two years of spending so much time in, in our homes, um, it, it seems that um, one of them is there is no such thing as neutral architecture. Every site has a story that we're adding to or taking from as we build on it. Uh, so as designers in this changing climate of the world we're designing in and the diverse populations we're designing for, um, we're all are participating in this political process. And that is a profound responsibility and honor that we're all taking on. Um, as an undergraduate advisor, I had the opportunity to speak with so many of you and gain particular uh, appreciation and understanding of the true diversity of this school that we have within MAP. And we are all going to be contributing our voices uh, that in many cases have not been heard and, and uh, incorporated in shaping the environments that we are joining. So, I encourage all of my fellow graduates to take on this responsibility um, with enthusiasm and passion and um, to go forth and, and do good. Congratulations, everyone. We know that you'll do good and we ask that you hold us accountable so that we continue to do good as well. Our next speaker is Bhavisha Venkitaraman a candidate for a dual Masters of Architecture and Masters of Community Planning. Please share your thoughts with us. Good evening, everyone, and a special welcome to all my colleagues graduating this winter. I'm honored to be speaking on behalf of my cohort today. The past few years have been a journey, a journey that has been filled with a lot of surprising terrain and a journey that will continue to be undulating in its extremes as we take on a world that is ever-changing. The Architecture and Community Planning Program has given me and my peers the opportunity to explore design in an integrated and relevant manner. Watching multiple presentations in the great space, guest speaker lectures organized by the departments and students, being a part of diverse studios, exploring social justice initiatives and change, student-led bodies making a difference in thought and process, national design competitions, opportunities for internships and scholarships, and many cultural events and forums that enable students and staff to interact freely have really allowed us to become a part of a larger community, both professionally and personally. The interdisciplinary nature of our education gives us the upper hand in a world that tends to become siloed in individualism, allowing us to cohesively unify vision and thought. The professors we have worked with have been nothing short of outstanding, finding ways to impart their wisdom in an innovative manner while making sure we are ready for the practical and professional world. I have tr truly enjoyed the great rapport I have shared with them throughout this program and know that it will only grow stronger in the future. The pandemic has not just affected our lives in a personal and long lasting manner, but has also brought to light the importance of community and support systems. 
Achieving all masters today has been the result of our sacrifices, time and hard work, that is true. But it has also been the devoted hours of shared learning, physical and emotional support, and educational experiences lent by our families, professors, friends, colleagues, and several new and old acquaintances that has enabled us to be here today. For that, we are eternally thankful. Channeling Oprah Winfrey, let me urge this community and class of 2021 to come together and not just put broken pieces back together again, but collaboratively create a new and more evolved normal, a world more just, kind, beautiful, tender, and luminous as a creative whole. Congratulations, graduates of 2021, and may we continue to push beyond borders in all our endeavors in life. Thank you. I look forward to being a part of the world you envision. Our next student speaker is Charmaine Davoudian, candidate for the Masters in Real Estate Development. Charmaine. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Charmaine Davoudian from the Real Estate Development Program. I want to start by thanking all of our staff, faculty, Program Director Maria De Marshall. I also wanted to thank all of our friends and families who stood behind us, supporting us, the students, during our journey over the last few years. To my fellow graduates, I'm so proud and honored to share this moment with you. I've enjoyed time with the Real Estate Development Program, learned a lot from all of you and our mentors, professors, and consultants. I'm hopeful that our relationships and friendships continue as we cross paths in the future. Today represents a journey of hard work and dedication we all can be proud of. A journey which we will, which will live with us personally and professionally for the rest of our lives. On a personal note, I remember the very first day that I started my classes being new to this country and overwhelmed with the scale of the program. Now, after the last few years, I look back and smile of who I've become, thanks to my fellow students and a team of dedicated professionals who manage this fine learning institution. These past months have been tough with plenty of sleepless nights, but we made it through and here we are ready to soar to new levels. As we evolve and grow, let's remember that not everyone around us has the same opportunity we have had studying with this, uh, within these five walls. Let's all commit to take care and support those around us who are less fortunate or need additional encouragement as we evolve in our profession. Let me leave you with some uh, wise words from Michelle Obama. Instead of letting your hardships and failures discourage or exhaust you, let them inspire you. Let them make you even hungrier to succeed. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you for sharing those words. We've been inspired by some, some giants in the world from Oprah to Michelle Obama. Uh, thank you for the empowering words tonight. And our final student speaker is Amari Rennell Jones, candidate for the Bachelors of Science in Architecture. Amari, the floor is yours. Good evening. My name is Amari Jones. First, I would like to thank all of the faculty and staff of the School of Architecture, Planning and Preservation for making this graduation possible. I would now like to thank all of the parents, parent figures, family members, and friends that have supported us throughout this journey. And finally, to my fellow graduates, congratulations. Over the course of the past four and a half years, I've had the pleasure to be part of several school and campus-wide committees, while also climbing the ranks within our school's chapter of the National Organization of Minority Architecture Students, better known as NOMAS. But most importantly, I've had the pleasure of getting to know you all. Throughout all of these experiences and opportunities, there is one word connecting them all, perspective. I have learned that your peers are your greatest teachers. 
and that this is only possible through allowing yourself to be vulnerable to different ideas and experiences. We as a unit open each other's eyes to new perspectives. And now it is our turn to go into this next chapter of our lives, willing to learn from experiences different from our own. Thank you and congratulations, class 2021. Based on all of those words, I have no doubt that you all are ready to change the world.